So a true scientist isn't afraid to look at themselves and look at the data, right? And so I, I want to have my outcomes in clinic be transparent. Um, I want to make it public at the end of every year. This is the number of Lori's patients that said they were getting better, the number that said they were staying the same, and the number that are getting worse. And I would like to see how that compares to other clinics in my region, other clinics around the country. Because if I'm getting worse outcomes than my colleagues, I want to stop doing what I'm doing and learn from them. And because if I am getting better outcomes than my colleagues, um, they should be learning from me, right? But we don't know. We don't know until we look at it. And I do not have the time and energy and wherewithal to apply for grant after grant after grant to study homocysteine modification and vitamin D supplementation and dietary counseling and what happens when you encourage people to eat a plant-based diet. or Like we can't break all these individual things up. Like we can't study the pieces of the intervention. At some point we have to step back and, and do comparative effectiveness research and just ask, um, you know, do people who see a movement disorder specialist do better than people who see a general neurologist? That study's been done and we already know the answer is yes. Um, let's do a similar study using patient reported outcomes and ask, do people who see both in a naturopathic physician and a neurologist or uh, do better than people who only see a neurologist? Uh, what about people who only see a naturopathic physician? And let's just start to see the numbers because if I were a patient, what I would want to know is what works, right? The only thing I care about, who are those people who have the same disease I have and in six months, and they can tell you today that they are better today than they were six months ago. I want to know who those people are and I want to do what they're doing, right? And, and I want to know which doctors they're seeing because those are the doctors I want to go to for guidance. And those are the providers that should be teaching other providers, right? And so what I want to do with research is get out of this idea of we have to study the medicine, right? The, the, this idea that the solution is going to come in drug A or drug B. And realize that the approach is part of the medicine. How we introduce ourselves to the patient, um, our beliefs about what's possible and what's not, uh, the attitude of the person who greets you at the front desk, um, that's all part of the therapeutic program. So bringing comparative effectiveness research to people with Parkinson's disease, what might that look like? What I wanted to do is ask the question, uh, are any of us getting better or worse outcomes than the others? Comparing naturopathic clinics, this was all over the US and Canada. Um, but So these are different clinics all around the United States, um, all naturopathic clinics, so there's going to be a lot of diversity in terms of population served, uh, geographic, cultural preferences, um, and competence and paradigm of the clinicians. Naturopathic medicine is a nightmare. There are some people that only do herbs and other people who do a lot of physical medicine, touch and manual medicine. There are people who write a lot of prescriptions and act a lot like MDs. There are people who um, do energy medicine and homeopathy and things that are horrifying to me. So you're gonna get a huge hodgepodge at the naturopathic clinic. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, and you can see, um, so the blue section are the number of, the blue lines represent the people who say, my, over the last six months, my disease has actually gotten better. And so you can see clinic number two is certainly doing better in that regard. Whatever clinic number two is doing, we might want to learn from them because their patients seem to re be reporting more improvement than the other clinics. So you can also see the gray bar represents people who say my disease is getting worse. And we have on average about 40% of people at any given time around the national population say 40% of people say my disease is worse today than it was six months ago. When we looked at these four different naturopathic clinics, um, clinic number three, 70% of their patients are actually getting worse. That to me um, calls into question, maybe they're actually doing something that's harmful. Um, it could be that uh, through, through no malintent, they are actually giving some herb that's blocking the meds or it's actually somehow being harmful or causing them to uh, not get 
appropriate treatment elsewhere, but this is stuff that I think needs to be studied. I think we need to figure out, first of all, is my data correct? If someone comes behind me and cleans up the data, do they get the same results I'm getting? Um, can we improve the quality of it, um, be more clear in how we define things? I mean, there's, there's some cleanup can, that can happen on the back end. But if we are able to see that, that one clinic is doing getting unusually poor outcomes and another clinic is getting unusually good outcomes, it only makes sense that we should go to those two clinics and see if we can figure out what is the difference between them, right? Um, same thing for comparing naturopathic care to some of my conventional colleagues. I am not, I, I, I don't, I'm competitive and I'm not afraid to lay the cards on the table and if I learn that my patient, that there is a clinician down the road for me, whether it is a chiropractor or a massage therapist or a movement disorder specialist or a neurosurgeon who is getting unbelievably great results with my patients that I'm seeing. When people come to me and they say, Clinician X has been a game changer for me ever since I started working with this one person. Whatever they're doing, if they tell me their lives are better, I want to learn from that person. If I learn that my patients are spending $200, $300 a month on supplements, compromising their quality of life, paying to come see me in the clinic, and my patients are actually progressing the same or faster than people who don't come to see me, I actually want to know that. I want to know that for my own education and I want to know that out of respect for my patients and the people I'm trying to help. So what I did is I compared uh, the number of people who said they're getting better or getting worse at different clinics around the Pacific Northwest. Um, this is preliminary data. Nobody has gone behind me and double checked it. I went through and I said, oh, I know that that doc is at Swedish. I know that doctor is at U University of British Columbia. I know that doctor is at OHSU. And so I um, took what I knew of each practicing doc and indexed them according to different clinics. And I only included clinics that had two or more practitioners at that clinic so that no one doctor would be singled out here. In this region, we see about 8% of people saying, I am better today than I was six months ago. You can see that there are three clinics who are getting almost double those numbers. Um, these three clinics are clearly doing better than the rest. I think there are a whole bunch of reasons that we can't, um, I think there are a whole bunch of reasons why we can't say that the clinics getting worse outcomes are because they have bad doctors. It could be because they have bad doctors, right? If there are bad doctors at that clinic, you would expect worse outcomes. But it is possible that you can have a great doctor at a clinic getting bad outcomes, right? It could be a community where um, the income is really low, where people can, don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. It can be an underserved community. It can be a poorly educated community. It can be someplace that lacks resources. So you can have excellent doctors, but have reasons other than the physician's capacity that are influencing um, outcomes. You would expect, you know, two academic centers in the same region to be pretty similar. University of Washington should look a lot like Oregon Health Sciences University, right? We have two um, academic medical centers with medical schools that do research, that do DBS. You would expect those two institutions to look pretty similar. So we can start to kind of look around and see, does the data hold up? Is that a legitimate question? And so um, while it's not fair to say that the bad the, the tall gray lines there are higher number percent higher percentage of people progress who seem faster who seem to be getting worse are necessarily because of bad doctors i do think there's some usefulness to being able to look at people who are getting unusually good outcomes a disproportionately high number percentage of patients reporting improvement in parkinson's disease um, Yeah, I, I do think that there's value to looking at the tall blue lines. I think if there are people in this community who are getting better results than the others, we should figure out what they're doing differently and figure out if we can learn from them. Can we do it too and improve the outcomes in our patients? 
I don't know that we can. I don't know that this is a legitimate way to do studies, but this, these are the types of unorthodox approaches to research that I would like to see happen.